Gabe. History's Forge and Fire has already had 7 seasons in the past 5 years, and with this comes an increase in creativity, skill, and design. With this show pulling in more and more skilled swordsmiths from all over the country, there have been many various foragers with their own quirks and specialties. With swords having been used for thousands of years as some of the most deadly weapons available, there are many beautiful, intricate types that are made in the show. In this video, we will display the top 9 types of magnificent weapons highlighted in Forged and Fire, so make sure to leave a like, hit subscribe, and see if you agree with what we put at number 1. Number 9. The Kopesh One of the most influential of the early swords that arose during the Bronze Age, the Kopesh was an ancient Egyptian weapon that featured a hooked blade sharpened on its outside edge. Sickle-shaped swords were typically cast from bronze and were believed to have made their way to Egypt via the Middle East. During the New Kingdom period, they became a common military weapon and were prized for their gruesome slashing ability in close quarters combat. The Kopesh also came to have a ceremonial value and was often depicted in art or included in the tombs of prominent Egyptians. The boy pharaoh Tutankhamun, for example, was entombed with two sickle swords of different sizes. The Kopesh was eventually abandoned in favor of more traditional swords around the 12th century BC, but not before it had become one of the most iconic weapons of ancient Egypt. It was right on the spine at the dog leg, and the edge masked it pretty well, but Jay's got sharp eyes. If it was going to come apart, it would have come apart there on those femur bones. Number 8. The Kukri for centuries, this short inwardly curved blade has been a traditional tool and weapon in Nepal. Europeans first became fascinated with the Kukri in the early 1800s when the forces of the locals' prowess with the blades, including their ability to lob off limbs or disembowel a horse with a single blow, persuaded the British to enlist them as their volunteer troops in the army. The Gurkhas went on to establish themselves as one of the world's toughest military units and their service knives became prized for their distinctive shape balanced blades, and superior chopping and slashing power. To this day, the Kukri remains a standard-issued Gurkha weapon and serves as the emblem of Britain's brigade of the Gurkhas, which consists entirely of Nepalese recruits. I could cut through all those sugar canes easy. But the problem I started having with this particular blade was in the sharpness test. Number 7. The Falcata. Crafted from high quality iron or steel, its distinctive blade was single edged near the hilt and double edged near the point, and was designed to combine the chopping power of an axe with the slashing ability of a sword. The Falcata is most famously associated with the Carthaginian general Hannibal, who equipped his African troops with it during the Punic Wars against Rome. According to some historians, the sword's effectiveness in close combat may have played a role in Hannibal's crushing victory over the Romans at 216 BC's Battle of Cannae. Doug, what do you think? Justin turned in a nice looking falcata with a shape over there. Performance wise, during the test, it did quite well. Number 6 The Ulfbert Swords. Beginning in the 8th century AD, the Vikings terrorized Europe with their ferocious raids on coastal settlements and cities. While only a select few of the Scandinavian martyrs carried swords, Evidence showed that those who did often possessed finely crafted blades that were centuries ahead of their time. These Ulfbert swords named the signature present on each of their blades, and were forged from high carbon crucible steel, and were renowned for their superior strength, flexibility, and sharpness. Only 170 Ulfberts dating from around 800 to 1000 AD have been recovered from archaeological sites. But since blades of similar quality did not reappear in Europe until the Industrial Revolution, their origins have been the subject of considerable scholarly debate. Some historians suggest that the Ulfberts were made from steel imported by the Islamic world, where metalworking was more advanced. Others contend that they were forged from an ore deposit located in Germany. Regardless, the Ulfbert swords are one of the most crazy weapons featured in Forged and Fire. Number 5. The Bolo Knife the bolo knife was originally an all-purpose tool used for clearing brush or harvesting crops, but in the hands of revolutionaries it became a formidable weapon of war. The machete-like blades originated in the Philippines, where native guerrillas used them as improvised arms in the Philippine Revolution of the Spanish War and the Philippine-American War. 
Despite being severely outgunned, these bolo men often use their knives to gruesome effect. Their principal weapon is the long, broad blade of the vicious looking knife called the bolo, with which they do their deadly work with. That is a quote by an American serviceman named Ira L. Reeves. He continues to write, They make many boasts on their prowess and skill, and taking human life. And one of their proudest feats is to sever a head from the body in a single blow. The fearsome blades later saw action during World War II and they remain a common weapon in Filipino martial arts. Number 4. The Katana Few images from Japan's medieval history are more iconic than that of the lone swordsman holding a gleaming katana. For centuries, these curved single-edged blades were the preferred weapons of the samurai, the noble warriors who served Japan's feudal lords and followed a strict code known as Bushido. The best samurai were renowned for their ability to cut down enemies with a single lightning fast strike, and their swords were often revered as if they were precious works of art. Perhaps the most famous samurai sword was the Hanjo Masamun. This weapon was an early precursor to the katana that was forged in the 13th or 14th century by legendary swordsmith Goro Nudo Masamun. Hailed as one of the most exquisite Japanese blades ever crafted, the sword was owned by 16th century warrior Han Rusha Gonzaga and was later passed through several hands before disappearing at the end of World War II, possibly after being sold by an American serviceman. Despite repeated searches, the treasured national artifact has never been found. Number 3. The Bowie Knife American history's most iconic survival knife was named for Jim Bowie, the pugnacious frontiersman who became a leading figure in the Texas Revolution prior to his death at 1836's Battle of the Alamo. Bowie's reputation as a knife fighter had been forged nearly a decade earlier in 1827 when he killed a man during a brawl on a sandbar near Natchez, Mississippi. The weapon he used was most likely a thick butcher's knife, but once the word of the duel spread throughout the United States, many pioneers commissioned their own bowies from blacksmiths. The knife soon developed a distinctive look that included a 9 to 15 inch blade and a clip point. They became all the rage on the frontier, where they were used for everything from skinning animals and chopping wood to barroom brawls. There were even specialized schools dedicated to teaching the art of fighting with the bowie. The blades later fell out of fashion as combat weapons after the introduction of more reliable pistols, but they continue to be used in hunting and utility knives to this day. Number 2. The Roman Gladius Perhaps more than any other weapon, the gladius helped make the Roman Empire. Along with the pilum, a spear, and the scotum, a shield, this two-foot, double-edged sword was one of the primary arms of the legions that conquered the Mediterranean basin. Its design evolved over the centuries, but it typically featured a sharpened point and a firm, reliable blade forged from high-grade steel. Primarily a stabbing weapon, the gladius was at its most effective when used in a disciplined formation where troops could protect themselves with the shields while making vicious thrusting attacks against the enemy. Historians Richard A. Gabriel and Karen A. Metz had this to say about the blade. In the hands of a highly trained Roman legionnaire, this is the most deadly of all weapons produced by ancient armies and it killed more soldiers than any other weapon in history until the invention of the gun. Number 1. Butterfly Swords The butterfly sword was initially designed to meet the training and defense needs of Shaolin monks. In harmony with Buddhist philosophy and teachings, the monks designed the weapon for parrying, disarming, and cutting, not for killing. The blade was structured with dull edges on the top and bottom to be used for interception of an opponent's weapons with only the first three inches of the blade being sharpened. The remainder of the blade, top and bottom, was solid and dull for parrying and non-lethal striking purposes. Today's Wing Chun sword techniques still emphasize parrying, obstructing, or intercepting an opponent's weapon. These remain highly consistent with the original design and intent of the blade itself. However, in Forged in Fire, we are shown that the beauty and specificity of these blades gets a new interpretation. Let's do this.
Thank you everyone for tuning in to Film Trip. Don't forget to leave a like, press subscribe, and comment below if you agree or disagree with our list.